What is going on everybody, Weedle Tweedle here, and we are back again with another Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle, and this one's going to be against Marquise, a person I battle off my Discord server, so if you guys are interested in the Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle and trade, community Discord chat room, and a place to hang out and find battles and meet new people and all that fun stuff, feel free to check out my Discord, a link will be in the description, and me and my opponent are having a rarely used battle today, as Marquise is packing like a pretty weird looking team, looks like half style, half hyper offensive, um, you know, he has the cancer Cress Elia on there, which makes you want to KMS Loki. And I'm using a very fun team. I don't want to get too into team preview as this battle is like 18 years long, aka 40 turns. So I'm not going to talk too much about team preview. We're just going to head right into this battle. I split up this battle a little bit in some portions, as you'll probably notice, but you will understand why when we get to that point. So turn one, my opponent is going to leave with this Gligar as I lead off with my period, my wishy-washy. I was expecting the Cloyster to lead off, but I guess this works as well. Obviously this works better for me. So my opponent is not going to want to stay in here and take the Ice Beamer Surf, so he's going to choose to switch into his Cresselia here. Not too surprising, as I'm just going to choose to fire off a Hydro Pump just to gauge damage and whatever he wants to bring in. Hydro Pump just do a really big chunk of damage to Cresselia um, for... I mean, wishy-washy standards and Cresselia standards, that is a lot of damage. Normally, you take like 8% with any special attack, and then Cresselia just like sets up calm mines on you like this. My opponent's not going to hesitate to try to 6 me with Cresselia. I can understand why, he just wants to get this battle over with and get his free W post to the YouTube. Unfortunately, I'm not going to make it that free. I mean, just because you use Cresselia does not mean you get a free one against me, even though I don't really prepare for that. It's okay. Anyway, I'm going to bring a Lia part here, just a prank. And I used this thing in a recent video, so I'm like, maybe my opponent's going to expect Encore and switch out, because that's what my the smart play would be. But at the same time, I'm like, Cresselia is broken, I need to Encore this thing into <laughs> Combine so I don't get 6 0 swept by it. So that was my ideology, as thankfully we're able to Encore the Cresselia into Combine. He may have clicked Moonlight or Moonblast, but either way, we lock him into Combine for now. So he's temporarily taken care of, and he's at half HP, so if he wants to switch out, that's fine with me. I'm just going to choose to switch into my Accelerator, my Excelgore, to lay up some entry hazards. This is my opponent just decided to switch out himself and bring in as a Scavalier, my counterpart, because he actually needed to trade Excelgore, or um, Shalmet with, uh, God, I don't remember that Pokemon's name. Carablast. Carablast and Shalmet together to actually get the Evolve forms. I've done it multiple times. And so I, I just think it's like a really cool thing that they did in this game. But they're not going to do it with any other Pokemon, but it's a cool idea that they made for Excelgore and a Scavalier to have them be traded with each other to have them evolve. That's like really sick. And they kind of like fuse together. I just think the idea is really cool. And they like switch roles. I don't know. Very interesting, interesting. idea on Game Freak's behalf. Anyway, I'm going to lay up my Stealth Rocks with my Legos. I'm very risky play because I could have just lost my um, Legos to the Escavalier. And I should keep my Legos healthy for the Linoon because Belladrum Linoon is very powerful in the RU meta game, in my opinion, if you play it properly. And if it's allowed in NU, it's going to be like top tier threat, in my opinion. So anyway, Cloyster's going to go for Shell Smash immediately. <laughs> um, I didn't think you'd go for Shell Smash, I thought it would just fire off Icicle Sphere considering I already revealed the Encore. And so if I brought in Liopard on a Shell Smash, he would have been in a rather bad position, but he does not hesitate to click the trigger and pull the trigger, I meant to say. And now he's going to go for the Rock Blast, and I'm hoping that Wishy Washy just face tanks, because Wishy Washy is a fairly bulky water type, even without investment thanks to its legendary defense stats. And Rock Blast does do a lot of damage, but Wishy Washy is able to live it. Out, it hits me just outside of my Agua Berry range, which is a little bit frustrating, but we're able to hit and power electric and activate the focus ash and I actually had a really big brain fire here because I forgot that um, Agua Berries and Berries activate in between multi-strike attacks so I could have stayed in with my Wishy Washy and lift this Rock Blast but instead I throw away my uh, Dredge Gun's life for absolutely no reason really when I should have just stayed in with Wishy Washy and tank the attack and then just kill this thing off. When we get to double crit we just kind of find it but it doesn't really matter. I lose my Dredge Gun but that's fine. I mean I lose Dredge Gun which makes me extremely um, weak to the line noon so I have to play around that very cautiously. But now I'm going to bring in just a prank and just go for the copycat because I can't outspeed this thing and this thing has potential to 6 o me because it is Cloyster. So I'm going to go for the Rock Blast because I copycatted it from him. And we're able to knock out the Cloyster with an unnecessary crit. Not bad. And we're able to knock out the Cloyster. And uh, yeah, so that's another instance where Copycat Liopard just kind of like poops in my opponent. But I guess Sucker Punch would have done that as well, so I don't even know. Anyway, in comes a Scavalier, and I don't want to stay in and die to Mega Horn or Bell Stinger or whatever hit he wants to go for. So I'm going to bring Wishy Washy here, hoping I can live whatever hit he wants to go for. I was pretty much sacking it off, really, which is why I should have definitely stayed in instead of sacking off my uh, Drudgy Gun. 
but um, he actually goes for Iron Head instead, which is pretty funny, as he's actually going to knock me into my Agua Berry. And, or is it Figgy Berry that's holding? I forgot. I have like three berries. Yeah, it's Figgy Berry. Um, yeah, so I got all my health back, and now I'm going to go for the U-turn, because I don't think Hydro Pump is going to knock out the Scavalier, because the self the Scavalier is rather bulky, so I'm not going to risk that. I want to save my Wishy Washy for the Quagsire, or whatever else he has left. So I'm going to bring in my Braviary here, expecting the Mega Horn, as he's going to decide to go for Mega Horn. And... You know, Braviary takes it rather well. I mean, I do resist it, and I have no defense investment, but I do take it okay. And I don't think my opponent wants to stay in on me, but I'm not too sure. I can set up bulk ups on him, not that he knows I have bulk up, but I can do that. But my opponent immediately brings in Quagsire. I think he realizes that I'm about to try and set up, but I'm just going to fire off a Brave Bear just to gauge damage, really. And if I can knock out a Skyler, that'd be great. But Quagsire takes a very small chunk from it, which is very good to know. Because I'm curious to see how much Brave Bird does to Quagsire. Because I am a sub bulk up set. And sub bulk up actually does a lot of work against Gligar and Quagsire. Because I don't think they have the um, tools to break my substitute. So if I can get a free sub off on them, that would be very beneficial to me. Unfortunately, Unaware does block any attack boost that I do obtain. So it's going to be very annoying to break Quagsire, even though I can set up on it. And I don't want, I don't want to have you guys sit through. Um, me stalling through a Quagsire, so I'm trying to find alternate methods of winning against this guy because when you bring like three godly walls and you have very mediocre sweepers to break them, um, battles tend to go on for quite a while. So Quagsire is going to be forced out of here as I do carry Giga Drain. I don't think he knows if I have Giga Drain or the Energy Ball, but I'm sure he has some knowledge that maybe it's not the best idea that I switch or stay in. So I'm able to lay up, lay up a layer of spikes. Get some nice spikes on the field so I can, you know, apply some pressure to his um, walls, even though Cresselia is the only wall I'm trying to pressure, in all honesty. But also, pressuring that line as well is also very good for me, as here, he actually reveals the Fell Stinger, and I'm like, oh, okay, I guess he has Fell Stinger. I didn't think he actually had Fell Stinger, but I guess it's becoming more and more common since Fell Stinger is not an absolutely useless move now. Now I'm going to bring in Girl's Best Friend and go for the Fire Blast. Ooh, I just, you know, lands to the side and then I just died to Mega Horn. So, um, I actually had Ice Beam for Gligar, Power Whip for Quagsire, and Fire Blast for Escavalier, and I would have loved if my Assault Fest Lucky Lucky could have gotten some screen time, but unfortunately it gets less screen time than 1010 does, so it's just a little bit unlucky. But I'm going to bring in Wishy Washy here, go for the Hydro Pump, and at that range of HP, Escavalier should be knocked out. It was really unfortunate I lost my Lucky Lucky like that, as I'm sure it would have come into some handy in this battle. But not too big of a deal. In comes the Cresselia. And uh, my opponent probably realizes that I can just kill her or kill him with Hydro Pump. So I don't know why he stayed in. But uh, yeah, then again, I'm slower. I keep forgetting that Wishy Washy's really, really slow, unfortunately. But I'm just going to U turn out of here because I thought he might want to calm mine as well. I don't know. This Cresselia scares me because Cresselia just scares me every time I face it because they always have a lackluster way of dealing with it. I don't have any strong dark type attack or bug type attack to hit it with normally, so this thing normally just 6 0s me. And it has a really high speed stat for a defensive god wall, so it's just like really obnoxious to take out. Like, it's faster than my bra Braviary, which is a little bit frustrating. Here, my opponent decides to go for Moonblast, and he's actually. You know, not going to do any damage to me at all, as now I'm going to set up a bulk up just to reveal that I have bulk up and make my opponent more inclined to want to switch out into Quag because I'm trying to bait that in at the moment. So I'm going to set up a bulk up and I realize that Moonblast did not do anything and since I'm bulking up, Psy Shock's not going to do anything either. So I know I can get a free substitute off on this thing. It's just really unfortunate that I'm actually slower than the uh, Cresselia, but I'm able to set up the substitute here. I'm at red HP, but I don't think Cresselia can knock out my substitute unless it starts setting up calm mines. But if he does that, I can just bring in my part and an Encore him into it. So um, either way, I should be able to work around this crest. It's just going to take me a while. As here, he's just going to go for the Moonblast once again. Um, I don't know if he realizes that. I guess I guess bulk up makes Psy Shock do less damage, but yeah, Moonblast is unable to break up my break my substitute, and now I'm able to roost and get all of my health back. Very nice. And um, yeah, I don't know if he wants to go for, he wants to go for a Psy Shock or Moonblast or whatever. Uh, I actually have no idea. But I can just keep setting up on this thing, so I don't know why Cresselia wants to stay in on me. But um, I do decide to switch out here and bring in just to prank my Liopard, expecting Psy Shock. Now, I could have obviously switched into Moonblast and died, but like, look. I have like intuition skills, and I just, I just felt it. I felt the Psy Shock coming, alright? So I know I can encore him into Psy Shock. And my opponent knows that too, since I revealed it already. So I'm expecting the switch into something, and he does end up bringing in Gligar. And he's going to take them rocks damage. going to go for a nasty plot here. 
and get some I just want to get some momentum going because at the moment sit, I can't sit and watch walls slowly get whittled down I have to like play aggressively if it means the battle ends faster I'll do it like even if it makes it you know less likely for me to win I will do stuff like this because I cannot sit there and face wall gods for like 30 turns straight I just can't do it I mean if you want your battle to be uploaded you shouldn't use wall gods against me because if the battle goes on for too long and I don't deem it entertaining I probably won't post it even if it was a good battle if it's me getting toxic or your walls getting toxic stalled by a freaking Grelicanth which actually happened then I'm probably not going to post it because it's a freaking garbage content but anyway my opponent's going to bring in line noon here and I do carry copycat but then I realize that extreme speed is going to knock me out from this legit shiny extreme speed line noon my opponent must have worked really hard to breed such a masterpiece like that but it dung us my lie part unfortunately I really was hoping it can do more but extreme speed does kind of cock block most other priority unless you are comfy I think try edge um draining kiss is faster than extreme speed so there you go I get the belly drum line noon counter right there anyway in comes Cresselia on me or I guess you could use Dazzling Brux, I should never thought of that, maybe I should try that out. Anyway, I'm gonna go for the Brave Bird just because I don't want to give that Linoon a free Belly Drum. If that, that thing gets Belly Drum off, it is over. I mean, that is the thing with Linoon. It, you know, it has a barrier that heals it for the amount of health it takes from Belly Drum itself. So it, it gets it got a pretty big buff in this generation. I think people are definitely sleeping on Linoon. Or not, because my opponent's using it. But I think Linoon is very strong and very easy to use if you um, know how to play the game and don't just throw it out turn one. I mean, you can see that about most sweepers, like Cloyster especially. I'm um, here, something very funny happens. My opponent, Moonblast, gets a special attack drop as he gives me the Defiant things, you know, because he lowered his stats. So I get plus two attack and then plus one from my uh, bulk up. So there's no way my opponent's going to want to stay in on my... Uh, Braviary, right? But no, here's where Bra Braviary's wings start flapping very fast. So that means that the battle's been sped up a shit ton because my opponent decides to stay in. And I'm like, okay, well, I will eventually knock you out. I am behind a sub and you can't kill me unless you start setting up a bajillion combines. But even if you do, I'm at plus three attacks. So, like, what are you doing? I'm gonna go for a roost here just to get all of my health back. And I could just eventually knock this thing out. I just need, like, a couple of brave birds. And I don't want to be at lower health so, like, the Lion Noon can revenge kill me. So I'm trying to. Played safe, Moonblast is unable to break my sub even at plus one as Brave Bird's an easy 2 at KO thanks to my plus three attack. It's just really annoying how Cresselia does that speed me. And my opponent could go for Moonlight here, but my opponent just decides to let me kill the Cresselia thankfully. And uh, yeah, we're able to Brave Bird and knock out this Cresselia. So no more speeding up because that was actually like 10 turns. It was like eight turns. I figured I'd speed that part up because that was just really obnoxious. Anyway, in comes Quag. And I definitely should have stayed in here and clicked Brave Bird. Because I'm at plus three, but he is unaware, so I know it wouldn't have killed him. But I could have definitely gotten a crit or something, and I definitely should have risked it or just stayed in for that one turn. And I also know that Quagsire cannot kill my uh, Braviary because he probably has Earthquake, Skull, Toxic, Recovery. That's what most Quagsire sets are. And you know, you might get the occasional like Ice Beam Quag, but like it's pretty much the staple set. And I knew I could easily set up on Quagsire, but there, that is not fun to watch, especially since my Unaware or any boost I do acquire will be nullified by Unaware. So it'd just be a very um, long PP stall battle, and that is the most boring shit ever. I'd rather lose than win from PP stalling. So um, I'm gonna try and just knock out this Quagsire with Wishy Washy, but unfortunately Quag does outspeed Wishy Washy because I am quiet nature, so I can use U-turn and get some power. And he's able to knock me into my red health, and I'm gonna be able to knock out the Quag with the Ice Beam here. My opponent was smart and not clicking recover twice, or not clicking recover, as he's gonna bring me into my schooling form, or you know, outside of my schooling form. And now I'm stopped school, so call me Verilis, I dropped out of school. Now in comes Linoon, and I'm gonna take some rocks and spikes damage, and now here's where the freaking berry I'm talking about comes in. Belly Drum Linoon gets all of, Belly Drum Linoon gets all of its health back after Belly Drum. It's just like pretty strong. It's now my opponent's gonna collect Belly Drum and I'm like, alright, wishy washy, I know you're in like a magic card format at the moment, but you have to knock this thing out with Hydra, but please knock him out. But Linoon does live with the sliver because wishy washy sucks and here is where if i saved drudgicon i definitely would have had a shot of winning because there's where the rough skin plus rocky hunt would have definitely came through but instead i uh just played very poorly in this battle and we're gonna lose zero one to belly drum e-speed lane noon so very fun and uh close battle in my opinion i mean it could have been better without the chrysalia but it was still a very fun battle nonetheless and i hope you guys did enjoy that little bit of a longer game if you enjoyed this battle and want to support my YouTube channel, please be sure to hit the like button as it's the best way to support my YouTube channel. And I really appreciate your guys' support lately. It just means the world to me. And uh, yeah, the question of the day 
is going to be which Pokemon game had your favorite storyline? Let me know in the comments down below. It doesn't have to be a main series game. It could be from like Coliseum or like Pokemon Ranger or like Mystery Dungeon or whatever. But yeah, my favorite Pokemon games that have the best storyline have got to be Coliseum. Just because the starting of the game was so badass, you literally like blow up freaking the antagonist base and then you freaking steal the shadow thing and then you get Espeon and Umbreon. It's like so cool. And I also really like Black and White too. I definitely had one of the few darker um, plots in the game, and Black and White 2 is honestly one of the best Pokemon games they've released up to date. Sun and Moon cannot even compete, honestly, Black and White 2. Besides the awful, the absolutely awful XP mechanics, um, Black and White 2 is definitely a very, very good Pokemon game. And uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what your favorite storyline from a Pokemon game is, and uh, yeah, I'll check you guys in my next video. Alright, peace.